Hey, what's up everyone? Matt here. So if you remember one of my last videos, I ended up buying two Alice Chalmer forklifts. I showed you the blue one that was in the garage and uh, we even got to see the, the pre-auction inspection and I ended up buying it. I also talked about the second forklift I bought this yellow thing back here. So it's hiding under a tarp because it's winter time, but soon we're gonna take it out of hibernation and see if we can get it going. But what I'll do is I'll show you today some videos that I shot on the first day that I ended up getting it delivered here, and you'll be able to see the stuff that I did to kind of get it running. So stick around and enjoy. So as you guys know, I bought this 1969 Alice Chalmers uh, I guess a couple months ago at the auction runs fine you know there's a bit of work to be done on it and uh, I always fall into the same trap you know I keep checking out the auctions and I say you know do I need something no do I want something yes and then what did I find another 1969 Alice Chalmers forklift and normally uh, I always go pick up my stuff at the auction it's kind of a ritual go there with the trailer the truck pick it up and uh, this time, for the first time in my life, with COVID, with Christmas coming, with a new little baby, time is finally worth more than money in my life. So what I did was I called my transport company uh, and I asked them, hey, could you guys go pick up my forklift? Uh, it said that it ran, the hydraulics didn't work, but it did start apparently. So I get to my shop yesterday night and I had a lovely surprise waiting for me. 1969 Alice Chalmers forklift. So that's it. It was sitting here. Um, it was sitting here last night. And I can imagine by the skid marks that it did not run. They just probably loaded it on with a loader. And uh, they have a they have a flatbed that kind of dumps. And they just uh, they just plopped it down over here. So kind of blocking the way. Um, the forks were removed. Like I said, apparently there's a hydraulic issue. Hydraulics don't work. Uh, you know, cylinder's got a few nicks in it. Like I literally, I saw it last night in the dark and uh, I got here this morning and here it is. So, you know, there's a bit of an oil leak on the other side. Wheels are all full of oil. So, you know, we'll see what's happening there. The differences between this one and the one that I currently had was it's the same model. It's an F. P40, where's the data plate? I don't know if you guys can see that, but yeah. FP40 2PS, I'm not too sure what the 2PS stands for. You know, is it the, the, dual, the dual wheels up front? Uh, lifting capacity seems to be just about the same. Um, another big difference between this one and the one I have is I got a manual, kind of a two speed plus reverse. This is an automatic. So it's an automatic, uh, and apparently I think that's like a creep pedal. That's the gas pedal, and that's the brake. This one seems to be a little bit more original. It's got the original hour meter, which I found cool. Uh, and it's got this high-low. It's a speed, speed range control, high-low. Everything's kind of seized up. This looks like it's the choke, although it does say throttle lock. But yeah, and... Uh, what I what I what I wanted to buy it for was kind of for the parts, I guess. Mine didn't have these cowls, and it didn't have this foot plate. Um, you know, now I'm looking at it and I'm saying, well, you know, I'm not the kind of guy that likes to sell my sell my junk, so I might end up keeping both of them. But we'll see. Try to get one running real well. The other big difference, or I should say, the main main reason why I bought this one was, although it's the same model. I don't know if you guys saw it before, but lift 144 inches. It goes up 12 feet. Mine only went up 130 inches, which, you know, I put up some racking in the garage and, and just having that 12 foot reach is, uh, is all the difference for me. So, I mean, you know, the better one, I mean, I'll have to check and see what the hydraulic problem is. I'll have to check and see if I prefer an automatic or the manual. And then this will end up going on whichever one I choose. Um, and then I got a whole bunch of spare parts, you know, a spare motor, spare hydraulics, technically. I mean, this one's got a good seat. And uh, yeah, so we should see what happens there. Missing the radiator cap on it. <laughs> I don't know if it fell off on the way or what. You know, that's the thing with these auction machines. You have no idea what the provenance is. Um, one thing I did notice is that it looks like someone might have 
might have kind of, you know, got it, got it, I guess, in better condition than it maybe once was. I mean, it's got a bunch of new, these are telltale signs here. Look at this, it's got a stainless steel, it's got brand new bolts here. The seat, which is in perfect condition, is not original. It's got brand new bolts holding it on. So maybe this thing didn't have a seat on it. You know, was this thing fixed up to go to the auction? I mean, that's what a lot of guys do. And I mean, it's quite possible that this was just kind of dead in someone's yard and uh, and they shipped it off. You know, the, the paint on it is in okay shape, although it wasn't specifically painted for this auction or unless someone bought it, you know, and, and used it for, or didn't use it for a few years. These rims look like they were repainted with some white. Tires are actually in good condition. Um, what else did I see? Um, yeah, you know, electrically, you know, this key looks new. Uh, it's got a new bulb here, which is not original. And then it's got this on off toggle switch, you know, whether or not that's used for something. I didn't try starting it yet, but, uh, you know, so someone did kind of go through it at one point recently, I would probably say, you know, either to try to tune it up to use or they just gave up and they sent it to the auction but they wanted it to be a complete machine i didn't pay all that much money for it i did pay i did pay twice as much as the other one but i think i got the other one for quite a steal so we'll see if this guy starts up and just move it into the yard and we'll have to work on it some other time We got the cowls off uh, so this is how it was kind of sitting in here like I said that radiator cap uh, is not on um, there appears to be some I guess wetness in there whether or not it's full or not but anyways we'll have to make sure that we uh, we check and put some Presto in there before anything freezes and here we have an air box the air filter or what kind of just sitting there we'll put that aside for now okay a little bit oily but that's to be expected with a uh, with a 50 year old unit um, I noticed underneath you know here the tires are kind of covered in oil front and back and it was probably sitting in a bit of a puddle you can see it's a little oily got some lines hanging there look like the return line and you know the pressure lines are sort of just dangling my other one had that same kind of issue um, got a battery in it which is good and uh, let's check the oil I think oils on the other side okay it's got what do we got here hydraulic filters and maybe this is maybe an external oil filter um, oh no there seems to be an oil filter on the motor uh, all right that's gonna be interesting I think this seat pops yeah okay and it locks there good oh what's this starting fluid it's hard to make out for gasoline engines yeah this is okay so starting fluid so that kind of indicates i guess how easy this guy was to start aka not very um i gotta get my hand down there and check the oil what do we got here yeah. oh boy oh my god Okay, I'm not sure if you guys can see this. Try to try to zoom in on it here. That does not look good, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Let me get my glove off. Yeah, that does not look good at all. Oh, I thought it looked abrasive, but uh, okay. Maybe it's not abrasive. You'll have to excuse the, I'm kind of on the side of a road here, so. Um, okay, well, it is what it is. I don't know if there's, I don't know if there's water in that oil or if it's just bubbles. There's no abrasion in it. Well, maybe a little. Yeah, that's definitely not the, that's definitely not the best oil. <laughs> yeah all right well you know one of them has to become a parts machine so we'll see but uh regardless there is some kind of petroleum liquid uh inside this motor right now so what do you say we give this sucker 
a little start. We'll try to start it. So seeing as though we had this uh, lovely little can over here, we'll, uh, we'll try to give it some because that's most probably what was used to, um, to start it. Not so sure if I have to keep my finger on it while I crank, but I'm all alone here. So uh, two cameras, but only one man. Whoops. All right. Let's see if it goes again. Got around the choke a bit. That's stinky. Take it from there. So I uh, took the choke cable right off it and I put the air box back on. Hopefully that'll, that'll help us out.
I rigged up this little wire over here that I can activate the choke. It seems like it wants to sort of run at half choke. Probably a bit of a carb issue. I mean, I'm not too sure what kind of fuel this thing had or when the last time it ran. But we, all we have to do is move it from right here to just around that corner and into the back of the yard. So let's hope we can get out of the way because right now it's kind of blocking the entrance to my, to my yard. We'll check and see if there's any gas in it. Uh, I'm put a screen at the bottom. There's a bit of gas at the bottom. Not so sure. It's enough to. It's enough to run. Put a bit more in. Not too sure this is my problem, but I mean, we'll just eliminate it. So we'll just open this up over here, take a little look at the linkages, see what's going on there. So we got our automatic transmission over here, and look, there appears to be fluid in it. Full. We're full. We're uh, even a little bit over the full mark, so. Let's assume that it's not that. Let's check and see uh, the linkage over here. Uh, I, I found that it didn't, like it clicks into neutral, reverse, I guess, kinda, and then drive. Uh, it's as if it doesn't have too much of a stroke to it. We'll check and see if that linkage is engaging. So that'll be neutral, reverse. Well, I'm not sure it can go in any further than that, can it? Oh, it is. It's engaging all the way. So these, here we have brake. And I think I remember seeing the manual. This was like a creep speed or something. So this is the gas. We got that sloppy old linkage right there. And then this guy, uh, but it seems to activate the brake also, but when you press the brake, it doesn't seem to, so I'm not too sure. Maybe the creep is like, I don't know, it uses the brakes to kind of slow it down. I'm not too sure. Hmm. I have no idea. I've never, ever worked on one of these things before. So, hmm. Okay, so I have not made any official progress, but uh, I removed this kind of foot plate off of there to see these linkages and stuff. Interesting side note, the gas pedal is fixed onto this plate and it basically just goes and 
and hits up against this linkage over here like that. Cool. So the reason why I took that off is because I noticed down here there's an arm and I didn't really see what was activating it. I kind of looked around a little and uh, this is the brake pedal. So as you activate that, it comes and it activates the master cylinder over here. But if you look at this whole attachment over here, there's a big spring and there's a linkage that goes back to the transmission. And like I said before, I'm pretty sure in the manual, I read something about this was like a creep pedal or something. So if you notice, I'm not sure if this is normal, if it's just seized up or what, but when you activate it, it does activate the brake, but it also activates that kind of linkage over here. So I guess that must be like a, like a bypass that sort of gets you into a lower, a lower setting. Now, what I wanted to know was what this linkage over here was. Trace that one back, flexible line all the way up to this thing. High, low, I guess, range control, yeah, high, low range control. And it's completely seized up. Side note, emergency brake disconnected. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna remove that cotter pin and see if that linkage works. I mean, I'm not sure, I might be in some kind of neutral or something. I might have, you know, I did touch this emergency brake. Did it kind of hit itself in a neutral? We'll see. I also wanted to mention, here's a little clue as to where this thing might be from. Check this out. Tower signals for control of aerodrome traffic. And then some kind of, uh, I guess, code for how to uh how to determine what the blinking lights are so this thing probably came from an airport somewhere now i'm in quebec so had this thing actually came from quebec i'm guessing it would have been in french however if it's old enough in the 60s it could have been written in english uh or it comes from ontario the states who knows but uh yeah we'll probably never know where it came from but you know did definitely spend a bit of time in an airport at some point so I managed to get that pin out with a little persuasion and uh, the linkage is pretty loose but if you notice here we're in I guess the high gear and it does click into a middle position and does click into another position so whether or not the middle is neutral you know I, I feel like we were in gear but what I'll do is I'll keep it maybe in this lower position if I look at you know this thing's kind of seized all the way up and I'll assume that up might have been low. I mean, we'll play with that, but uh, we might be getting closer. And this thing might be getting closer to being the parts uh, forklift. <laughs> so we'll get, that, we'll get that pedal plate back on and uh, we'll give it, I guess, our 15th try. some equipment that uh, that does work so uh, we're gonna try to yank this thing into its final resting spot you win some you lose some folks one Alice Chalmers saving another cuz why not
Well, there you have it, folks. The, uh, I don't know if it's the final resting spot, but it is a resting spot. And the good news is we've already started putting the sheet metal on this guy. So they ended up costing me a lot of money, but, uh, you know, I got it, I got it. I'm gonna have the one to go there. I just gotta cut a hole in it to fit that air box. And, uh, and that's it, so. What did I end up getting from all of this? Uh, a bit of sheet metal. I guess a ton of spare parts, whether or not they're good. Another set of forks. You know, I, I kind of got... Did I get screwed? Not really. I mean, you know, you buy something at the auction, you never know. And it's all good fun. And uh, Did I learn my lesson? I don't think so. Um, the ultimate thing that I gained from this was maybe timeless hours of toiling away with old junk. And uh, between you and me... That's priceless. Signing out.